Good evening. The hour is now 6.30. I am calling the meeting of the St. Louis County Council to order Tuesday, April 13, 2021. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the, to flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to, to the Republic for which, which it stands, it stands one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. For all. Please call the roll. Council Member Days. Here. Council Member Dunaway. Present. Council Member Fitch. Here. Council Member Webb. Present. Council Member Clancy. Here. Council Member Trakis. Present. Council Member Harder. Present. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. And before we get started, I wanted to uh, let you know we have some changes in our WebEx. Uh, they're technical. I don't know what they mean, but we have to take it a little slower this evening, I'm understanding. So when we put things up on the screen, we have to allow um, the technicians to do what they do. So I uh, just wanted to give everyone a heads up in case we have to slow things down a little bit. Um, Moving on to the approval of the journal. Please hold the uh, approval of the journal uh, until uh, next week. Thank you. We have no bid overs this evening, so we will move to communications. Madam Chair, we have no tax compromises this evening, so we will move to zoning matters. Under zoning matters, item number one, fourth district. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number two, sixth district. Uh, receive and file, please. Thank you. So ordered. Moving on to road and bridge matters. Item number one. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Moving on to other communications. Item number one. Receive and file, and that will be the same motion to item number four, and that will be the order. Item number five. Receive file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number six. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number seven. Receive, file, and hold on the order of business. Item okay. number eight. Receive, file, and hold on the order of business. I have requested information from the department on items number seven and eight, and I am still waiting on that information and will move forward once I get that. Thank you. Item number nine, fifth district. Receive and file. So ordered. Item number 10, sixth district. Receive file and the change of doing business name be approved as requested. Please. Is there a second? Second, harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number 11, first district. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number 12, third district. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion through item 14. So ordered. Item number 15, fifth district. Receive file and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 16, 7th district. <clears throat> Receive file and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 17, 7th district. Receive file and referred to the county executive and referred to the county to the council 
as a committee of the whole. So ordered. Item number 18. Receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number 19. Receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. The same motion will apply to item number 20 and that will be the order. Item number 21, second district. Receive, file, and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion for item number 22. So ordered. Item number 23, third district. Receive, file, and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion for item 24. So ordered. Item number 25, fourth district. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 26. Receive and file and that will be the order. Item number 27. Receive file hold on the order of business and refer to the council as a committee of the whole and that will be the order. Item number 28. Receive file hold on the order of business and refer to the council as a committee of the whole and that will be the order. Item number 29. Receive file hold on the order of business and refer to the council as a committee of the whole and that will be the order. And item number 30. Receive file hold on the order of business and refer to the council as a committee of the whole and that will be the order. Moving to add-ons, Madam Chair, item number one, third district. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number two, fourth district. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number three, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, seventh district. Receive and file. So ordered. Item number four. Receive and file and that will be the order. Item number five. Receive file hold on the order of business and refer to the council as a committee of the whole and that will be the order. Item number six. Receive file the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. And that will be the order. Do we have any special committee reports, Ma uh, Madam Clerk? No, we do not, Madam Chair. How many um, public comments do we have this evening? We have nine. Thank you very much. When your name is announced, uh, the clerk will ask you to begin speaking. You will state your first and last name and zip code for the record. And the clerk will give you um, uh, a, few, a warning when your three minutes is about to be up. So let's start with the first speaker this evening. Madam Chair, our first speaker this evening is Tom Sullivan, followed by Isora Liggins. I have a few things to mention. The bill has been received for what it costs to defend council members Days, Fitch, Harder, and Webb against a lawsuit brought against them in January by county government. The cost? $127,996. That's a pretty steep price for taxpayers to pay for something that never should have happened. I sent the council members a map put out by the U.S. Department of Agriculture showing food deserts in the St. Louis area. St. Louis County has some significant areas within the county. There is something that should concern, this is something that should concern the council as it directly affects many county residents. At the beginning of last month, it was said the one redevelopment proposal for Jamestown Mall would be released within six weeks. It is now six weeks. This Thursday marks two years from when there was a front page story in the Post-Dispatch about a recreation center to be built in North County. This was part of the deal to provide $240 million for the expanded convention center. Still no recreation center as promised. Last week, I mentioned all the trash that was by Normandy High School. County Land Clearance Authority seems to be the worst offender. It owns many of the properties. 
Trash is everywhere on Lulu Avenue and nearby streets. Lulu ends at North Market, which probably has the biggest potholes in all of St. Louis County. No one seems to care much about any of these matters. Thank you for listening to my comments. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Isora Liggins, followed by Reverend Daryl Gray. Madam Chair, I do not see um, Azora Liggins on. Um, okay, I know she had some problems last week and she talked with Chuck about that. Uh, I thought they had that cleared up, but um, anyway, we'll have to move on. I will reach out Let's to her, reach Madam out. Chair. Thank you. For her comments. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Next is Reverend Daryl Gray, followed by Matt Murrin. Good evening. Good evening. Good, good evening, Madam Chair and Council Members. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm Reverend Daryl Gray. I'm the Civic Engagement Chairperson for the 241 St. Louis County Clergy Coalition. I'm speaking in support of the impending resolution of no confidence against Chief Barton. Uh, the resolution may be non-binding, but it is, ex it is extremely significant. The power of the purse is the ability of one group to manipulate and control the actions of another group by withholding finances. You're very clear about that. You understand that the council has oversight of the police budget. And why would this council uh, be committed to allowing this chief uh, to have oversight over a budget when we believe that she has not had proper oversight or, or uh, conducted proper oversight over uh, the police department. It is our belief that Chief Barden is ill-equipped to leave, lead, that she is insensitive uh, to the particular uh, racial concerns among her officers and the impact uh, that her action and inaction has had on the African-American community. There was no reasonable rationale or explanation for her to transfer Officer Hall uh, to West County, particularly when Officer Hall has benefited the department in recruitment and in community engagement. We're not against Chief Barton as a police officer. We're not questioning her commitment to her profession, just her ability to lead the police. Finally, it is irreprehensible that the police commission would deliberately, in a move to uh, decrease public input and transparency, not allow verbal public input. We believe that this is in order to keep the public uh, from verbally questioning the police chief. Uh, we continue to, to ask uh, you, Madam Chair, and other members of the council to continue to be vigilant and committed, uh, continue to show integrity as it relates to our police force, and particularly our officers of color. Um, we just believe, Madam Chair, that now is the time for this council to speak boldly and openly and without uh, uh, concern uh, for any retaliation. Uh, by this police department. We believe that the, SO, the FOP uh, supports uh, Officer Hall and believes also that this has been retaliation in her movement because she decided to speak out as a black female police officer. When we ask police officers to speak truth to power, we should protect them, we should not retaliate against them. If we continue to have retaliation, then officers black or white will not speak out to injustices that they see within the department. We support you, Madam Chair, and other council members in a resolution of no confidence against uh, Police Chief Barr. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Our next speaker is Matt Murin, followed by Dr. Shannon McCullough. Council members, my name is Matt Murin, and I'm a resident of 63117 Richmond Heights, and am the 2021 president of St. Louis Realtors. We Realtors have been vocal advocates for rental assistance during COVID at the local, state, and federal levels, as we believe it's the best policy tool available to keep renters in their homes during this pandemic. On behalf of the 8,000 members of St. Louis Realtors, I first want to thank the council for quickly accepting the federal funds 
to stand up to the or stand up the emergency rental assistance program and to the county executive's office for their collaboration over the past several months to develop and implement the county ERAP. We know the importance of home and we're working to spread the word quickly about the new ERAP program in order to help renters and housing providers alike. For example, on March 24th, we held a St. Louis Area Rental Assistance for Housing Providers webinar that was co-hosted by the St. Louis Realtors, St. Louis Apartment Association, Community Builders Network, Spanish Lake CDC, and Tower Grove Neighborhoods CDC. We wanna thank St. Louis County for participating in that webinar. Our ask tonight is that the county continue moving with as much speed as possible to get that rental assistance delivered to those that need it in order to keep people in their homes. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Dr. Shannon McCullough, followed by Philip Wagonek. I'm bringing an issue to light this evening. Bill number 69, the ban on decline of cats that Councilwomen Clancy and Dunaway brought to the County Council last week. The bill was, the bill was voted on and passed unanimously. Why were the local leaders in my profession the veterinarians of St. Louis County not consulted on this matter. You can't legislate responsible pet ownership. The way to influence people on animal welfare issues is through education and compassion. I spent seven years in higher education training to be a veterinarian, and I have spent the last 31 years perfecting the art of veterinary medicine. 10 of those 31 years were directly in the trenches of animal welfare when I was working for a local animal shelter. I am a past president of the Greater St. Louis Veterinary Medical Association. With all due respect, how can two councilwomen that know absolutely nothing about the profession that I have spent my lifetime in make a decision about my profession? It seems to me that after the last year, when 25% of Missouri businesses have failed due to the mandates put into place because of COVID, that the St. Louis County Council has more important business at hand than wasting time and energy on a subject that they know nothing about. Where will the St. Louis County Council be when the family of a recently deceased person comes into my practice and tells me that they were left with their family member's cat? The only way that that family can keep the cat is that they deep claw it because they have a child with lupus or some other immunosuppressive disease? Or what about the elderly client that is on blood thinners and needs a companion in the few years that they have left in their life? And they had planned on getting a kitten and wanted it deep clawed to make it safe, safer for that elderly client. Council members, how would you feel if a group of people that know nothing about your profession, pass a law that you are no longer allowed to do certain things that you have been trained to do and you've been doing for 31 years. I've left multiple messages for Clancy and Dunaway and neither is bothered to return my call. Shame on you for leaving out the leaders in the veterinary community. Shame on you for not asking the experts for any input. Thank you, ma'am. Our next speaker is Philip Wagonect, followed by Gregory Porter. I believe uh, Mr. Wagonect uh, is not with us. We'll have to reach out to him. Um, if we can move on to Mr. Porter, please. Yes, Gregory Porter, followed by Cassandra Butler. This is Greg. Can you hear me? This is Greg Porter, uh, zip code 63033, unincorporated North St. Louis County Council District 4. Um, I'm, I'm the chairman of the North St. Louis County Problem Solving Committee, which has been in existence for the past 20 years. And I'm, I'm getting an echo in my phone here. Uh, 
Anyway, I'll turn this down. Uh, anyway, I wanted to thank uh, Ernie Trakis uh, for his comments uh, last week about the conflicting information that we both received uh, from the chief uh, stating that the problem properties unit is not being eliminated. Also wanted to clarify uh, in listening to the uh, last part of the council meeting last week and watching that, uh, my councilwoman Shalanda Webb's comments about her conversation with uh, the chief about the problem properties unit and the new community outreach uh, unit. In that conversation, uh, she indicated that she knew uh, really nothing about Officer Rink. So apparently there's a misunderstanding about the problem properties unit's mission on the part of uh, Shalanda, which is uh, not really her fault. She's brand new. But anyway, I wanted to, uh, uh, to let her know that the, the problem properties unit is really a unit that addresses the most serious types of problems in the county and that they take care of uh, the things that no other police or public works units have the capacity or the experience to address and resolve. Their objective, uh, just so you know, is not to burden pres uh, residents with fines for siding or roof issues. Those types of things would really be more in the, in the realm of the public works department. So I just want to make sure that my councilman fully understands the importance of this unit. Uh, myself and others do welcome the additional uh, assistance from another unit like the community uh, outreach unit, but the original PPU needs to remain in place as it's a vital uh, unit to the preservation and stabilization, stabilization of neighborhoods. So I just want to clear up any mis misunderstanding that Councilman Webb may have had. Uh, there also seems to be a systemic problem in the current administration in that if there's someone that they don't like or they want to get rid of, that person is either moved or removed, as in terminated, such as was the case with uh, Hazel Irby and Lori Fiegel. In both of those cases, they were terminated by the county executive. Okay, there's also a systemic problem in the police department, as is in the case of Officer Rink, and also the law, all of the lawsuits have been filed by the uh, police officers. You can just look at all the uh, cases that's happened, uh, the Wild Haber case, discrimination case, Lieutenant Troy Doyle, uh, all of the, and then the officer that was transferred to the uh, um, Division of Patrol from HR. So uh, these are things that uh, county's actually starting to look more like the city all the time, which is not a good thing. And so um, I think that there's, a, there's some changes that needs to be uh, brought in, in St. Louis County, and it needs to start at the top in both the uh, county executive administration and in the, uh, the police administration as well. I know I'm running out of time, so thank you very much for your uh, time and consideration. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Cassandra Butler, followed by Shannon Robinson. Good evening. Um, Good evening. <laughs> dear uh, St. Louis County Council, um, I'm in support of actually what a lot of uh, Mr. Porter just said. Um, but I want to support the St. Louis Ethical Society's call for a no confidence vote in St. Louis Police Chief Mary Barton. I was disheartened by the parent uh, weak and seemingly unfair selection and Mary Barton to be the county's police chief. I have seen no evidence since her hiring to persuade me differently. In fact, all of my initial reservations have been confirmed by subsequent activity of that organization. Leadership in our society's major police forces matter, possibly more now than any other point in our county's history. We have shown many signs in that organization, though, of sputtering, of being mismanaged, particularly regarding police culture and its mission of being of service to the entire community. Now is not the time to be satisfied with the status quo. Let's not continue to try to do things as we've always done them. Now is the time for a better public safety organization that values good officers and the development of a healthy organization that is able to serve the entire community well. For that, St. Louis County Police Department needs leadership, capable of moving the organization forward into the future, not back from the future. 
Chief Mary Barton is not the right leader to do this. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our final speaker this evening is Shannon Robinson. Good evening. Shannon Robinson, 63025. I'd like to talk about um, what I'm seeing as gaslighting that is happening to St. Louis County citizens. And the reason I know this is because I've traveled outside of St. Louis County a lot, like many of you may have. I've been all over Missouri, Louisiana, Florida, Mississippi, Idaho, Tennessee. People are happy, children are happy, businesses are open and thriving, and life looks completely different. In fact, you can go across the river and the hot dogs are still rolling on the roller. Do those leaders care less about their citizens? I highly doubt it. Dr. Page, is this just a grand experiment on how much you can get away with? Is this an experiment on how much control you can have? It's been about control and scaring everyone into submission, and that is why I call it gaslighting. More children die of the flu than COVID, and we have never done this before to our youth. With the flu, it's more random. You pretty much know if you're not going to do well with COVID. We've seen the numbers, we've seen the data. Those who are elderly, in fact, in our county, 53% of all of our deaths came from long-term care facilities. So those who are elderly and those that have been labeled med medically obese with BMI numbers well over 35. Those are not numbers I'm making up. Those are out there. Those are the data that we see. This isn't a threat to standard citizen, healthy citizens. Zero children up to age 25 have died from COVID, yet our children are taking the brunt of the mandates. Why? Why are you blaming children who aren't even getting a sick, let alone carrying it? And what is your data to back up your science? We have more kids that have died from suicide than have died from COVID. We don't get the suicide numbers right away like we get COVID numbers, but again, Going back to my previous numbers, there are zero deaths in our county from kids. And I personally can list three young people who have taken their lives and numerous others who have attempted this. And this is the real crisis that you are blatantly ignoring. My last comment and question is for my council. What sacrifices are being made in the name of COVID? Have we been given any practical solutions to a balanced approach? What are we doing to ease the restrictions on our youth who are the least vulnerable? There is something really broken here, fundamentally broken, and we can see it and our kids can see it. And I'm asking you, please, as a mother who has seen her children emotionally and mentally struggle for almost a year, please keep asking these questions why we're doing what we're doing and demanding answers in order to keep our leaders accountable and get us the answers that we deserve thank you thank you ma'am madam chair that is all the speakers this evening thank you very much and um i appreciate you all coming forward and giving your opinions and Blessing your opinions as to how we're doing as a council and how we're doing as a as a county. Um, we will now have the report of the county executive. Good evening. Before the council tonight is my request for an emergency ordinance to stay evictions by fully implementing the CDC's latest eviction moratorium. In recent days, the circuit court decided to allow some evictions to move forward after staying the court action for a year. We should not let that happen. As a county government, we have a role to play here. And I'm asking the county council to help us stand up for our friends and neighbors facing eviction. Talking with council members over the past few weeks, I know that one of the priorities for the new federal funds coming into the county will be helping people stay in their homes with rental and utility assistance. Our ability to help people does not have to wait on the new federal funds. We can start right now. St. Louis County recently set up emergency rental assistance to distribute $29.7 million in federal funds. Over a thousand applications were received last week alone. With that support, residents struggling to pay their bills will be able to stay in their homes and landlords will finally be paid the rent and, and the pandemic prevented their tenants from paying. But this program has not yet had time to work. 
And although more and more of us are getting vaccinated every day, vaccination rates are still too low, especially among the most vulnerable. I understand the frustrations of landlords who have not been paid what they're owed. We are all frustrated by the pandemic. Some have been affected more than others. We want landlords to be made whole, and we want people to be able to stay in their homes. We must acknowledge the financial and human toll this pandemic takes on landlords and on tenants. Our Director of Public Health has advised me that allowing evictions during a pandemic is simply bad public health policy. Turning residents out into the street now before they have access to federal funds that could keep them in their homes or to a vaccine to protect them is unwise and unjust. Studies throughout the country show that evictions could trigger more cases of COVID-19. And we cannot uh, forget the important strides we've made in our cautious reopening. I worry that an increase in cases linked to evictions could be a big setback in those efforts. Before I close, I would like to remind everyone that you no longer need to pre-register for a vaccine appointment with the Department of Public Health. Now that we are no longer sorting appointments by tier, you can simply log on to sdlcorona.com and schedule a time you would like to receive your shot and select which vaccination site run by the Department of Public Health is most convenient for you. As has been widely reported today, the state of Missouri and St. Louis County Department of Public Health have paused their use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine following the recommendations from the CDC and the FDA but we will continue our aggressive vaccination efforts using Pfizer in place of Johnson & Johnson. DPH has administered more than 100,000 doses of all vaccine. But of those shots, 1,739 were J&J. DPH has been in conversations with those who had the J&J vaccine and those who were scheduled to have it. That's all for now, thank you. Thank you. Introduction of bills. Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Councilman Fitch. Madam Chair, last week you ordered an other communication item to be brought forward to this agenda, if you remember correctly. It was the executive order from the county executive over the changing of the restrooms in St. Louis County to gender neutral. Uh, for some reason, that didn't end up on this agenda. Um, is this something we could take up at this point since it didn't end up per your request? I'm not sure. Um, Madam, uh, Diane, can you uh, help us with that? Madam Chair, that was held on the order of business, so it moved to unfinished business. That's where it appears on the agenda. Okay. Will, the county, Fitch? will the county executive be here through the end of the agenda for us to have an opportunity to ask him questions about this? County executive? Yes, I will be here. We'll take it up then. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Moving on to introduction of bills. Proceeding with introduction, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Bill number 104 introduced by Council Member Days, an ordinance amending ordinance number 27,349 by repealing and reenacting section three pertaining to a grant from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for support of the Lead Hazard Control Initiative and Healthy Homes Program. Bill number 105 introduced by council member days, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with Adelino Winners Hubner Incorporated for on-call architectural and design services for the Department of Parks and Recreation and authorizing the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to execute additional necessary documents and revisions to the schedule of work activities. Bill number 106 introduced by council member days, an ordinance appropriating and setting apart the amount of $138,530 from the unappropriated balance of the general fund for support of a new lieutenant position in the wellness unit of the police department related to the active bystandership for law enforcement project. Bill number 107 introduced by council member days. An ordinance amending ordinance number 28,012 by repealing and reenacting section 2 pertaining to a contract with the United States Fish and Wildlife Service in connection with restoration of, pra of prairie habitat at St. Vincent Park. Bill number 108 introduced by Council Member Dunaway, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute an amendment to a contract with Forest Relief 
of Missouri for lease of land in Creve Coeur Park for forestry related operations. Bill number 109 introduced by Council Member Harder, an ordinance authorizing the County Executive and the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation Director to enter into an assignment of rights and obligations under contract for sale of real estate between the Conservation Fund, TCF, and the Wyman Center Incorporated, Wyman Center, whereby TCF will assign its rights and obligations to St. Louis County for property adjacent to Greensfelder Park, park property. Declaring the public necessity of and providing for the establishment of a public park and recreation facility site consisting of approximately 156 acres adjacent to Greensfeld, Greensfelder Park and authorizing acquisition of the land. Authorizing the county executive and the director to accept a warranty deed for the park property. Authorizing the county executive to grant a 1,623 square foot access easement across the park property to Wyman Center. Authorizing the county executive and the director to accept a grant of up to $125,000 from the Missouri Department of Conservation and appropriating same for support of the purchase of the park property. Authorizing the county executive to accept funds in an amount of up to $20,000 from TCF and appropriating same for support of maintenance of the park property and authorizing the county executive and the director to execute necessary documents. Bill number 110 introduced by council member days, an ordinance authorizing the county counselor to execute a contract for the appointment of banks law LLC as outside counsel to represent a defendant in a lawsuit in which there is a conflict of interest between one individual county defendant and other county defendants represented by the county counselor's office. Bill number 111 introduced by council member Trakis, an emergency ordinance an ordinance providing for a temporary halt in residential evictions in St. Louis County in order to prevent the further spread of COVID-19 in the county and declaring an emergency. Madam Chair, that is all the bills. Council Member Trikas, do yes, you have a Chair, motion? I do, thank you for um, recognizing me. Um, at this time, Madam Chair, I would uh, like to move to invoke rule 19 to suspend rule six in order to advance bill number 111 to the perfection order of business as everyone knows this is a bill that would provide for the next two and a half months um, rental relief assistance so that folks that are um, behind in their rent will be able to remain in their homes and in fact the monies will be provided to the landlords so i would hope that my colleagues will have the empathy to uh, see the wisdom behind this legislation. So with that, Madam Chair, I respectfully move to invoke Rule 19 to suspend Rule 6 and advance Bill Number 111 to the perfection order of business. Is there a second? Second, Wet. All in favor, please say, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill Number 111 is advanced to the perfection order of business. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will take it up at the perfection order of business. Unless um, you want me to, Madam Clark? Unless you, unless you want me to do so now, I'm happy to do so now. You can, uh, Madam Chair, he can he can do all of this right now. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm going to suggest that, that you need to read the bill. Madam all Clark? Right, very well. Yes. Bill number 111. Introduced by Council Member Trakis. Council Member Trakis, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, at this point, um, I would like to, uh, if we haven't already done so, take up Bill Number 111 for perfection. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second, Clancy. Discussion, please. Discussion. Discussion. Council Member Fitch, I heard you first. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I don't know who wants to answer this. It might be for the county executive. So he did a news conference with Congresswoman Cori Bush about this. Um, and my question that comes from the opinion that we received from the county counselor's office. I don't know if you've had a chance to read this, but I want to read one portion of this. Remember, Judge Burton is the presiding judge of St. Louis County. And here's what it says. However, Judge Burton 
has in no way indicated that any judge in the 21st Judicial Circuit will issue any orders evicting any persons covered and protected from the eviction under the CDC order. So my question is, if that's true, and I have to believe that Judge uh, Burton is, is being uh, factual, uh, why do we need this legislation? Who would like to address that? I don't know that the um, county counts. I'm sorry, go ahead, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, I think that uh, the, the county executive, can you respond to that, please? Yes, thank you for hearing this legislation. I do believe if you read the CDC order closely, um, this puts into force uh, into local ordinance, uh, the CDC rule and recommendation. The CDC order is currently being challenged in court. And should that challenge be successful, although our public health orders have been challenged over the past year, um, and they have survived all of their court challenges. In the event that the CDC order is overturned, this adds a, an added layer of protection um, and establishes that this is um, the law in St. Louis County and adds, and adds a, uh, an extra layer of protection for our tenants who are going through a very uh, difficult time and may not even know that this program um, exists. The court is also not able to advocate for um, residents who come in front of them. They can hear the complaints. And this also gives our, um, you may or may not know, but um, advocates for tenants along with county employees were out uh, knocking on doors this weekend to make sure that tenants knew that this program was in place and that they could access this program instead of having to leave their homes during this pandemic. So this is a very important tool to make sure that we have, um, we're able to get the resources to people who need them. And it's an, a very important backstop in the event that the efforts to overturn the CDC's order in court are successful. Madam Chair, uh, Council me, Member, just one second, Council Member Fitch, you had the floor. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, will, I will read it to you again, the county executive, because you didn't answer my question. Judge Burton is, in no way indicated that any judge in the 21st Judicial Circuit will issue any orders evicting any persons covered and protected from eviction under the CDC order. So I think what I heard you say is if the CDC, CDC order is thrown out, the judge will then decide on his own to go ahead and issue the eviction orders. Is, have you talked to Judge Burton, uh, County Executive, about this legislation? Uh, yes, I have, and I did. I did answer your question, but frequently in, in political conversations and political debates, when you don't like the answer, you can ask it again, and that's fine. But to see if the CDC order is overturned, then uh, this is an important backstop, and uh, you'll have a you'll have an opportunity here soon to decide what your your position is on on the CDC order, and your position is whether or not it should be law in St. Louis County. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Harder. I heard you next. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I don't know if anyone here on the council or in our listening uh, audience is aware that right now, today, this minute, you can go on our county website and or the court's website and fill out this two-page um, form that is from the CDC. And basically it says, do you qualify for to uh, to have a stay on your eviction. You check the box uh, based on income, and then you also uh, declare that I qualify for this based on your income. And you are now, at that point, you turn this in to your landlord, and that will keep an eviction from happening. So this is currently out there right now without our uh, ordinance and it can be accessed from all these websites or you, people can make copies of them and hand them out to tenants. And at the bottom of it, it says, if you checked at least one item in each column, your income level qualifies and that you are to turn this over to your landlord uh, or you can use it to turn over to the courts. So it says, finally at the bottom, uh, it says, give this signed page to your individual or company you rent from 
and and for landlords it says thank you for compliance if you violate the cdc eviction order you and your business may be subject to criminal penalties including fines and terms of imprisonment that's right here on this on this farm that's been in in uh in existence uh probably at least a month or more so i don't know why we need this uh, I am sympathetic to people that are hitting hard times, but that seems to be um, a solution looking for a problem when we already have the solution right here. I have talked to Judge Barton, and he said that if anybody walked in his court or gave one of these farms to any of his uh, sheriffs, this would stop an eviction uh, if, it, uh, if it was in progress. So that's, that is what he is going by from what he told me. So. That's just a piece of information, Madam Chair. Thank Madam you, Chair. Uh, Councilman Harder. Just one second. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Clancy was next. Yes, um, I'd like to share some things with some of the council members based on the weeks now of conversations I have had nearly every week with housing advocates from across the region who are working very closely with tenants who face imminent risk of eviction. St. Louis County sheriffs were knocking on doors yesterday to serve evictions. Now, fortunately, there were a few tenants who were able to produce this documentation that Councilman Harder has mentioned, but this requires them to have the technical knowledge and internet access to track this information down. As, as you know, Councilman Harder, I've heard you talk before that you are concerned, for example, in our public forum that we are unfairly um, blocking out some people with internet access. So I know you are aware of the discrepancies in internet access here in St. Louis County, and this has a huge impact on tenants being able to advocate for themselves. Um, this, this legislation is important. This helps to meet a dire need right now. We have 600 households in immediate um, and imminent threat of being evicted. And why would we not do all that we can to keep them housed right now? As Congressman Woman Bush said yesterday, housing is public health. This is an important issue, and I support and commend Councilman Trakis for bringing this forward tonight um, following the county executive's lead and to trying to expedite this. Thank you. Councilman Trakis. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to try to address um, the concerns raised by Councilman Fitch and Councilman Harder and, and sort of <clears throat> reiterate and embellish what the county executive has already addressed. The forms that Councilman Harder raised are, in fact, effective as long as the CDC's order is effective. If that order, which is currently under court examination and challenge, is found to be um, improper and stricken, then the forms Mr. Harder is referring to are worthless. They're not even worth the paper they're printed on. This ordinance will serve, as the county executive has said, as a backstop, as a failsafe, if you will, so that if that order is struck down, residents will at least for the next two and a half months still have the ability to stay in their homes. And by then I'm quite certain that more than sufficient funds will be made available and paid directly to landlords and property owners. So again, this is just a simple fail safe so that none of our residents are subjected to eviction. And I would urge my colleagues to, uh, to see that and, and support this measure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion on this? Uh, yeah, Councilman sure. Fitch. Thank you. One of the things I would like to see is a some sort of statement from Judge Burton stating that he has, supports this legislation. He has no problems with the legislation moving forward. And I heard the county executive say he has spoken with him, but I did not hear uh, any sort of affirmative answer from the judge on whether or not he supports this legislation. Okay. Councilman Fitch. Uh, Councilman uh, Trakis. Thank you. Um, with all due respect to my colleague, Councilman Fitch, I don't think Judge Burton's position on this ordinance um, is important. His order that he issued is an administrative order applicable to the courts. Um, this legislation is the council's business. The, the preservation of the ability of people to remain in their homes is our business, and we have to make that decision. And again, I, I very respectfully request that the council support this 
measure and that we provide this fail safe level of protection should it be needed. Thank you. Madam Chair. Uh, Councilwoman Webb. As I sit here and I listen to my peers, and I appreciate each of them from doing their due diligence and finding out more information concerning this legislation, what puzzles me as I sit here is, are we debating on helping the people in our community to ensure that they stay in their houses? It doesn't matter to me who brings forth the legislation. If we're gonna make sure that we are doing our jobs and taking care of the people of St. Louis County, that's what should be at the forefront of our minds. I really hope this council starts to work in the av in the path of what's best for the people in this community and stop the back and forth unnecessarily. We put legislation time and time again for a various number of topics. But what enrages me as I sit here is when we debate with people's lives and caring and providing and protecting and providing a home for their children. We've got to stop this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And let me offer, if I will, and I'm not sure how this will, I don't know if you've already made the perfection motion and, and, I, and, and it has been second. I don't think we're there yet. But I do want to uh, maybe suggest that we can go ahead and perfect this and then we can have uh, a committee of the whole, uh, Councilman Trakas. And because we have a couple of things, we have an opinion from our legal people, and then we have others who have opinions on this. And, and maybe in the next, hopefully, if, if we can get all these people, everybody together for a committee, uh, we can we can look into this a little more carefully before we third read this. And I think we do, do, have, um, do have an opportunity to get that done. So if you want to go ahead and if that is acceptable, uh, to the uh, council as, as a whole, we can move in that direction. Madam Chair, I, I respect your position on that, and um, I'm happy to to perfect the bill tonight and, and hold it on the order of business. My only concern would be that uh, we do get it done by next week because I think time is of the essence here. There's no guarantee when the court that's considering the CDC order will rule. And if it does strike that order down, then I think residents in the county at that point are at risk and we, we have not passed the sale a fail safe for them. So I, out of respect for you, Madam Chair, I will uh, um, move to perfect the bill. I think I've already done that. That's what we're discussing. I will hold it on the final passage order of business uh, so that we can have this committee of the whole. Thank you. And I did not hear a second on that motion. Did we have there a was, second, Diane? Yes, Madam Chair, it was seconded by Councilwoman Clancy. Oh, okay, all right then. So so this is for the perfection. This is to perfect bill number Perfected. 111. All right, yes. this is where we are. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. So the motion carries. Councilman Trakas. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think um, I will at that point leave uh, the uh, bill 111 on the perfection order of business for next week. Um, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Clancy, I heard you first. Yes, I just, I want to, I want to underscore how important it is that we move quickly on this and try to get this done by next week. Um, you know, hearing scheduling can be challenging sometimes, but um, we are looking at potentially 70 evictions per day between now and next week here in St. Louis County. Every day matters for these families. There's no way of knowing that each of these households has this CDC paperwork, despite the outreach efforts. So time is of the essence here. And as Councilwoman Webb said, um, this is people's lives and livelihoods. Absolutely, and I do appreciate that, which I, I am going to employ that you all make your calendars available for us to do that. This this is, has been the challenge for, for a, a minute now. Councilman Trekkers, do you have something else to say? Just on, you know, I suppose, Madam Chair, that uh, if I thought I had seven votes tonight, I'd move for final passage, but I'm not sure that I do, and I, I can't... Um, Risk it. So I just want to reiterate Councilwoman Clancy's concern and ask that we all make ourselves available for Committee of the Whole this coming week so that we can act on this legislation next week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Councilman Harder. Yes, I would also ask the chair if uh, before the Committee of the Whole that we reach out to the uh, uh, landlord community and their representatives to find out what their opinion is and how they can help in this situation. And uh, maybe there's some things that need to be tweaked in this legislation that would benefit everyone. So I would encourage you to reach out to 
uh, the landlord tenant uh, organizations and, and get their opinion as well. We will do that. And we also know that we have a have a, um, engaged a company to do the kind of uh, what we're looking for in terms of these uh, these uh, evictions. And we do have someone we put the RFP out that has been. And so we need to look at the department director, um, uh, Andrea Jack Jennings, and perhaps she can come and shed some light on this as well. Councilman Fitch, I think I saw your hand. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say I appreciate you and Councilman Trakis agreeing to have a committee to hold on this. I think I really listened to what Dr. McCullough said in her public comments a little while ago. We're, we are rushing this and we are not getting all sides of this. Uh, we need to do that. We need to do our due diligence. That's why we ask questions like this. They might be uncomfortable or using the county executive's words, political, uh, but we have to ask these questions. And if we can't get the answers to them and move forward, we can move forward too hastily, like I believe we did on the cat declawing uh, ordinance. And uh, that's what happens when you don't ask the right questions of all the stakeholders and then make a decision. So thank you for that. And hopefully we will have all the stakeholders, all the pertinent people uh, at this. And please make your calendars available for this. OK, so thank you very much. Um, now, where were we? We are moving on to perfection, Madam Chair. Perfection, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bill number 20, introduced by Council Member Harder. Please hold bill number 20. Bill number 20 is held. Bill number 32, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Please hold bill number 32. Bill number 32 is held. Bill number 266, introduced by council members Fitch and Harder. I move to hold bill 266. Bill number 266 is held. Bill number 267, introduced by council members Fitch and Harder. I move to hold bill 267. Bill number 267 is held. Bill number 75, introduced by council member Dunaway. Please hold bill number 75. Bill number 75 is held. Substitute bill number one for bill number 77 introduced by council member Clancy. Um, please hold substitute bill number one for bill number 77. Substitute bill number one for bill number 77 is held. Substitute bill number one for bill number 84, introduced by council member Trakas. Yes, um, Madam Chair, I just want to again reiterate uh, the importance of the this bill through bill number 87 with respect to the retention of outside counsel for ongoing litigation uh, in which the county has been sued and is the defendant. I know that our, our schedule and our calendar are crowded, but I would... Um, Again, urge the chair to schedule a committee the whole on this between now and next week, and maybe we could do uh, two issues combined so that we can know what we're doing with these bills because the county's offers literally are at risk. If we don't have proper representation, it's likely that uh, the county will have adverse results in these litigations and um, the cost will be significant. So I urge the, the chair to schedule a Committee of the Whole on bill numbers 84, 85, 86, and 87, as well as the issue of retention of outside counsel before next week's meeting. Thank you, Madam Chair. With that, I will move to hold sub bill one for bill number 84. Substitute bill number one for bill number 84 is held. Substitute bill number one for bill number 85 introduced by council member Tragus. Move to hold substitute bill number one for bill number 85. Substitute bill number one for bill number 85 is held. Substitute bill number one for bill number 86 introduced by council member Trakas. Move to hold substitute bill number one for bill number 86. Substitute bill number one for bill number 86 is held. Substitute bill number one for bill number 87 introduced by council member Trakas. Move to hold substitute bill number one for bill number 87. Substitute bill number one for bill number 87 is held. Moving on to bill number 88, introduced by council member Clancy. I move to hold bill number 88. Bill number 88 is held. 
Bill number 96 introduced by Council Member Days. I move to perfect Bill number 96. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill number 96 is perfected. Bill number 97 introduced by Council Member Days. I move to perfect Bill number 97. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill number 97 is perfected. Bill number 98 introduced by Council Member Days. I move to perfect Bill number 98. Is there a second? Second. Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill number 98 is perfected. Bill number 99 introduced by Council Member Days. I move to perfect Bill number 99. Is there a second? Second. Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Aye. Motion carries. Bill number 99 is perfected. Bill number 100 introduced by Council Member Webb. I apologize. I move to perfect Bill 100. Is there a second? Second. Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Suppose no. Motion carries. Bill number 100 <laughs> is perfected. Bill number 101 introduced by Council Member Harder. I move to perfect Bill number 101. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill number 101 is perfected. Bill number 103 introduced by Council Member Trachus. Perfect Bill number 103. Is there a second? Second. Harder. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Bill number 103 is perfected. Moving on to final passage. Madam Chair, Bill number. I'm sorry, Councilman Harder. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, what is the voting sequence this evening? Maybe. It's sequence D. sequence D. Sequence D as in Diane. Okay. Starts with Councilmember Fitch. Okay. Moving on to final passage. Bill number 320, introduced by Councilmember Clancy. I move to hold bill number 320. Bill number 320 is held. Bill number 14 introduced by council members Trachus, Days, Dunaway, Fitch, Walton Gray, Clancy, and Harder. Hold bill number 14, please. Bill number 14 is held. Substitute bill number one for bill number 76 introduced by council members Dunaway and Harder. Please hold substitute bill number one for bill number 76. Substitute bill number one for bill number 76 is held. Bill number 220 introduced by council member Trachus. Please hold bill number 220. Bill number 220 is held. Bill number 89 introduced by council member Fitch. This is the uh, penalty change to the marijuana ordinance. And basically what it does is it changes the penalty for possession of small amounts of marijuana from up to a year in the county jail and or a thousand dollar fine to a maximum of a $100 fine and no jail time. That's what this does. I move for the final passage of bill number 89. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Second web. Roll call, please. Madam Chair, discussion. Discussion. Councilman Trakis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to point out that uh, I understand Councilman, Councilman Fitch's motivation here, uh, but I do believe that marijuana is, for lack of a better way to put it, an entry drug, meaning that it's the first stop in a progression to more serious um, drugs. And so 
I'm concerned that by reducing the penalty for possession of a small amount of marijuana, we encourage that escalation. And I know um, others in the past have felt the same way. And so I think that I cannot support this bill for that reason, because I do not want to send the message that somehow recreational use of marijuana is um, akin to alcohol, because I, I don't believe it is. I do believe it is a gateway drug. I'm concerned about the impact that that may have. That is the, the essentially no, no penalty at all, encouraging young people to use other types of drugs, including narcotics. So thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to be heard. Thank you. Please, any further discussion? Councilman Fitch. By the way, Councilman Trakas, if you would have asked me about this five years ago, I would have answered just like you did. Um, I've changed so uh, through the years. I would have. I absolutely would have. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I think society has changed. Um, I've changed. I've seen um, the harm it could do. And realistically, what's going on in St. Louis County now, because I had a conversation with the county counselor's office and the municipal court and prevent ed which used to be the national council of alcohol and drug abuse about this issue and you know what it would do and what it does realistically today if a police officer in unincorporated st louis county stops someone and they have a small amount of marijuana on them they get a ticket they go about their business they go to court it's reduced to a littering and they pay a 75 dollars fine that's what's happening today so what i'm doing is bringing the actual penalty in line closer to reality of what's happening today. That's all I'm doing. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any uh, further Madam discussions? Chair. Count, Councilwoman Clancy. Yes. Yes. Um, I, you know, I appreciate Councilman Fitch entertaining some questions because there really hasn't been much discussion about this. And I believe this has moved through at a, at a decent clip every week um, and has not been held on the agenda. I really haven't heard much from the community about this. I do think this is a step in the right direction. I wouldn't mind having the chance to hear from more folks um, for or against this. Um, I'm curious though, Councilman Fitch, if you um, had spoken with the prosecuting attorney's office at all, I was under the impression that they're not prosecuting these cases anyway. That's not necessarily a reason to be for or against this. You know, it, I think it would be important to bring alignment with our ordinances into current practice to your previous point, but I'm curious if that's a discussion you've had with the PA's office. That's a great question, Councilwoman Clancy. I'm glad you asked that uh, because I have not, and this is why. Uh, Wesley Bell, Prosecutor Bell, has already announced that he's not going to prosecute what he called misdemeanor uh, marijuana cases. Uh, that's where these would fall. These are ordinance violations, so the prosecuting attorney does not prosecute these anyway, no matter what. Uh, Ms. Orwick's office prosecutes these charges. So he really, Mr. Bell, doesn't have a, lack of a better term, dog in the fight of this particular, because it's an ordinance violation that he doesn't entertain anyway. So he really doesn't have a say in the matter because this is handled in the municipal court level for county ordinance violations. He's makes He makes decisions on state cases. So basically he's prosecuting felony drug cases now, which we do not prosecute in the municipal court. That is a good question. Got it. And then also, why have a fine at all for this? Because that was a recommendation. By the way, I, I toyed with that, I, and I asked Prevent Ed. And I have a lot of respect, as I know you do, with the folks that work at Prevent Ed. Their suggestion was is you have to have some penalty because the vast majority of the Americans that say that they have not used illegal drugs is because they're illegal. And if you say there's no uh, penalty, uh, you're basically saying they're illegal. And the professionals there suggested that there be some, I'll call it a symbolic fine. Uh, like I said, here it's a maximum of $100 and no possibility of jail time. Uh, under the old ordinance or the existing ordinance until this is amended, they could get up to a year in the jail if the judge wanted to do that and up to a $1,000 fine or both, they could do that. So this removes the possibility that they could get that. And the other thing, Councilman Clancy, I think you'll appreciate is I looked at taking the money that's generated in the county courts through these violations uh, and taking that money, putting it into a drug court account where that money could be used to for the judges and the courts and the drug court, which, by the way, we don't have a drug court in the municipal court. It doesn't exist. 
Uh, although I know uh, the court administrator is trying to get something like that set up, I look forward to that. But we're taking this money and be able to be used to evaluate, especially repeat offenders for minor drug offenses. And going back to Councilman Trakis's uh, concerns is gateway drugs. If this person has 10 summonses for low level of marijuana, they might have a problem. They need some sort of evaluation and intervention. That's what this money would do. Uh, the municipal court said there was about $46,000 taken in in fines in St. Louis County uh, over the last two years. So it's not a large amount of money, but it would be enough money uh, that we can, a judge would be able to say, listen, I'm going to send this person for some sort of counseling or intervention. Uh, so that is something I'd still like to see eventually. Uh, but right now, um, I felt it was best to move forward, at least with changing the penalty. Thank you. That answers my questions. Thank Any you. further discussion? Please call the roll. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakis. No. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 89, there are six ayes and one no. Thank you. Bill Number 89 is finally passed. Bill number 90, introduced by Council Member Days. I move for final passage of Bill number 90. Is there a second? Second, Harder. Session. Roll call, please. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on bill number 90, there are seven ayes. Bill number 90 is finally passed. Bill number 91, introduced by Council Member Days. I move for final passage of bill number 91. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. Discussion? Roll call, please. Council Member Fitch? Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 91, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 91 is finally passed. Bill Number 92, introduced by Council Member Days. I move for final passage of Bill Number 92. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. Roll call, please. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. 
Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 92, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 92 is finally passed. Bill Number 93, introduced by Council Member Days. I move for final passage of Bill Number 93. Is there a second? Second. 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 Roll call, please. Council, Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakas. Aye. Council Member Harder. <clears throat> Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 93, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 93 is finally passed. Bill Number 94, introduced by Council Member Days. I move for final passage of Bill Number 94. Is there a second? Second, Fitch. Roll call, please. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakas. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 94, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 94 is finally passed. Bill Number 95, introduced by Council Members Fitch and Harder. I move for final passage of Bill Number 95. Is there a second? Second. Harder. Roll call, please. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakas. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 95, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 95 is finally passed. Moving on to resolutions. Madam Chair, we have 13 resolutions this evening. Resolution number one, introduced by Council Member Trakis, in the matter of application for a conditional use permit in the R7 residence district to allow for the construction and operation of a group home for the elderly, PC 24-19, Adworth Senior Living, RE, LLC. I'm sure I move for the adoption of resolution number one. Is there a second? Second, harder. Roll call, please. Council, oh, I'm sorry, that should be, let me change that. I'm going to clear that for a minute. Okay, I will make sure that that gets changed to uh, Council Member Trakas made the uh, motion. Council Member Fitch, you're on. Right. Thank you. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakas. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number one, there are seven ayes. 
Motion carries. Resolution number one is adopted. Resolution number two this evening introduced by Council Member Harder. Uh, please read uh, resolution number two. Yes, sir. Resolution, whereas National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, NPSTW, is observed each year during the second week of April, and whereas the observance was originally conceived by Patricia Anderson of the Contra Costa County, <clears throat> excuse me, California Sheriff's Office, and whereas in 1994, NPSTW was formally recognized by the United States Congress and is celebrated each year during the second full week of April, to coincide with National 911 Education Month. And whereas the annual observ observance was created to raise public awareness of the hard work and dedication of the first first responders and further serves to educate the public, providing a familiarization with the mechanics of 911 and creating confidence when calling for help. And whereas the St. Louis County Police Department's Bureau of Communications, quote, Bureau of Communications is the largest public safety answering point in St. Louis County, with an authorized strength of 91 employees and serving over 400,000 residents. And whereas NPSTW will be observed throughout the United States from April, April 11 through the 17th, 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri as follows. Section one, the County Council recognizes the week of April 11 through the 17th, 2021 as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week and expresses its deepest gratitude to all the dedicated and hardworking employees in the Bureau of Communications. Section two, the administrative director shall send certified copies of this resolution to St. Louis County Chief of Police, Mary Barton. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I move for adoption of resolution number two. Is there a second? Second, Fitch, and discussion? Discussion. Councilman Fitch. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was out at the Office of Emergency Management today to visit with the 911 dispatchers and have a talk with them and thank them for their service again during this National Telecommunicators Week. Um, I thought you might be interested in hearing one small uh, statistic from that bureau. As we read on the front page of the Post-Dispatch two weeks ago, of all the 911 issues in St. Louis City, how long it takes to answer those calls and people being assaulted and waiting for, in many cases, multiple, multiple minutes, or maybe not 911 answering at all. Well, that's not the case out at the Office of Emergency Management and the, the Communications Center of the County Police. Uh, I asked for the statistics to see how quickly our 911 calls are being answered. 90% of the 911 calls are answered in less than 10 seconds. 90% of the 911 calls are answered in less than 10 seconds. That's something uh, for this council to be proud of, and I commend the men and women that do that tough job for 12 hours every day at the uh, Bureau of Communications. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. <clears throat> Council Member Harder? Aye. And congratulations to all of our 911 dispatchers. Council Member Days? Aye. Council Member Webb? Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number two, there are seven ayes. Motion carries. Resolution number two is adopted. Resolution numbers three, four, five, six, and seven this evening introduced by council members Fitch, Dunaway, and Clancy. Uh, thank you, Kevin. I move for the adoption of resolution numbers three, four, five, six, and seven. Is there a second? Second. Dunaway. Madam Chair. Discussion. Madam Chair, um, can I please ask the deputy clerk to read a prepared summary recognizing the firefighters and police officers who are honored in the five resolutions just adopted? Absolutely, Kevin. 
Yes, Madam Chair, resolutions four, five, six, and seven adopted this evening recognize and honor the firefighters and police officers from Creve Corps, Olivet, and St. Louis County who will be awarded and honored at the Creve Corps Olivet Chamber of Commerce annual awards dinner and auction on April 16th, 2021. Those being recognized and honored are Captain Jim Rajazowitz, or I'm sorry if I messed that up. Uh, the EMS training coordinator for the Olivet Fire Department, who will be recognized as Firefighter of the Year for his hard work and determination to meet the challenges presented by the pandemic head on and continue to provide critical instruction and training classes to ensure that the department maintains all required certifications. The Crave Court Fire Protection District's B Shift, who will be honored as the 2020 Firefighters of the Year for their heroic efforts and life saving response to a rapidly growing fire at a three-story apartment building on March 7, 2020. Officer James Mullen, field training instructor for the County Central Precinct, who will be recognized as Officer of the Year for his ability to prepare newly appointed police officers to fill the roles of competent and professional law enforcement officers, as well as for his professionalism, dedication, integrity, and strong personal character. Officer Patrick McKeon of the Creve Corps Police Department who will be recognized as Officer of the Year for his contributions to several critical calls this past year, including his response to a possible familial child abduction where he successfully rescued an eight-year-old child and facilitated the appropriate mental health intervention for the suspect, as well as for his leadership in proactive police patrol, his kindness, and his willingness to help his coworkers no matter what. And Sergeant Jeremy Horton of the City of Olivet Police Department and a veteran of the United States Marine Corps and Army National Guard, who will be recognized as Officer of the Year for his development and management of the department's crisis intervention team and making sure his fellow officers are properly trained and equipped with resources needed to be effective when responding to mental health calls, as well as his leadership as firearms instructor, instructor where he has expanded critical tools training and brought attention and focus to de-escalation tactics and other alternatives to arrests. And Madam Chair, I appreciate uh, Councilwomen Dunaway and Clancy co-sponsoring the, these uh, awards and these resolutions. Uh, the three of us share the jurisdiction of the Creve Corps Olivet Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And did you move for the adoption of all of them at the same time? Three, yes, four, five, five, six, Councilman and Hart. seven. Yes, ma'am. Right. I believe Councilman and Harder seconded. He did. Right. Okay. I have now, uh, uh, Councilman Trakers. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry Dan. Madam Chair. I had Council Member Trakis. Was that Council Member Harder that made the second? No, that was me. That no, was me. That, that was Trakis. Thanks. Well, we'll let Council now. Uh, let me ask. Um, I guess Beth, do we have to have roll calls on these separately, or can they do uh, one in, in a week? We could do them Beth? all together. We can't do them all together. All right, let's go. Roll call, please. Councilmember Fitch? Aye. Councilmember Clancy? Aye. Councilmember Dunaway? Aye. Councilmember Trakis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Councilmember Days? Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolutions number three through seven, there are seven ayes. Very well. Motion carries. Resolutions number three through seven are adopted. Moving on to resolution number eight this evening, introduced by Council Member Days. Thank you. I move for the adoption of resolution number eight. Is there a second? Second, second. Webb. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, I won't have you to read this. This was a resolution that I had to try to get in uh, last week, but it is uh, regarding National Minority Health Month. And given the pandemic and its um, effectiveness on the African American community, uh, in this resolution, we were suggesting very strongly that we have same day registrations and 
walk-in services and uh, and we are thankfully have gotten with the department of public health and they have instituted uh, many of the suggestions that councilwoman webb and i put in to uh try to encourage the particularly the african-american uh, community to come forward and get their vaccinations so i will not read that except to say that uh, this will be going to uh dr khan Doucette. Uh, Schmidt and given to uh, the people with the outreach because I think it is extremely important that we do even more than we're doing right now to increase the outreach in the African American community. So with that, I will move for the adoption of resolution number eight. Is there a second? Second, Webb. Thank you. Uh, Roll call. Discussion, uh, please. Discussion. Councilwoman. Yes. Hanks. Yes. Um, I appreciate you noting um, the hearing that we had last week about this. It was very informative. Um, I appreciate um, some of the spirit behind this resolution, but I also am concerned that it doesn't adequately reflect the work that the health department has done during this pandemic, and therefore it is complete and a little bit incomplete and a little misleading. Um, for example, a North County outreach group, which includes you, Madam Chairwoman, and Councilwoman Webb, was formed to improve access to vaccines and information. The county is delivering vaccines directly to homebound residents' homes. The county has held zip code targeted events in North County. The first mass vaccine site was in North County at Florissant Valley Community College. Um, as you are well aware, the county developed a new PSA program to increase vaccine registration, which featured both you, Chair Chairwoman, and Councilman Webb, um, which I recommend everyone should watch those PSAs. They were fabulous. Um, there's even more that's been done, which we know because the new public health department director, Dr. Khan, as you noted, spoke with us last week, um, especially after all of the work that he told us is, in, it is ongoing. I think that this resolution is disingenuous at best. Of course, there is always more to do, and we need to be on the cutting edge of outreach and community engagement. But I believe strongly that it's important to recognize the work that has been done and the efforts that are ongoing in an incredibly difficult environment. Um, but I do take it from this resolution that the department will have the support it needs from the council to achieve these goals. And so I'm pleased to see that level of cooperation and wanted to note all of the above um, as we prepare to vote on this tonight. And thank you very much for that. And I and in any situation, it can always be done. Uh, more can be done. Uh, however, the African American community still lags far, far behind in the number of vaccinations uh, that they are receiving. Uh, we had one at Del Delwood uh, just this week, and now that vaccine has been uh, on hold. It was a J and J vaccine. So, in light of that, and in light of all of the fact that uh, the the African American community still is not getting the number of vaccines that they should, we still need to do more outreach. So, I appreciate your comments, uh, Councilwoman Clancy, and I, I am saying that the uh, the department is doing as best they can with what they have, and uh, but we still need to do more because the fact of the matter is, when they don't get vaccines, that is um, is jeopardizing an entire community. So thank you so much for that. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Um, abstain. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Council Member Days? Aye. Council Member Webb? My vote is aye, and Madam Chair, I would like to be a co sponsor of this resolution. Thank you. Madam Chair, on resolution number eight, there are six ayes and one abstention. Resolution number eight is adopted. Resolution number nine, introduced by Council Member Fitch. Please read the resolution. Yes, sir. Resolution, whereas the loop trolley, quote, the trolley, 
is owned by the Loop Trolley Transportation Development District and operated by the Loop Trolley Company, a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. And whereas when it was in service, the trolley operated on a route from the Missouri History Museum in Forest Park to the Del Mar Loop area in University City in St. Louis County. And whereas the trolley is currently out of service, and whereas multiple recent media reports have indicated the owners and operators of the trolley have requested $1.6 million in funds to resume operation of the trolley for a two year period. And whereas taxpayers have already spent $51 million on the trolley, including $3 million from St. Louis County taxpayers in 2015. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri as follows. Section one, the County Council opposes the request for $1.6 million submitted to the East West Gateway Council of Governments by the owners and operators of the trolley. Section two, the administrative director shall send a certified copy of this resolution to the chair of the East West Gateway Council of Governments. Thank you, Kevin. I move for the adoption of resolution number nine. Is there a second? Second, Harder and Tim, would you put me on as the uh, co-sponsor? Co yes, please. Madam Clerk, did you get that? I did, thank you, Madam Chair. Councilman Trachis. Thank you. Uh, I want to. Um, congratulate and commend Councilman Fitch for bringing this resolution forward. I think you could make the case that there probably is no greater example of a waste of taxpayer money than the loop trolley. And I'm not just talking about the St. Louis region, I'm talking nationally. Um, the idea that we would throw more money at this is absurd. And with Councilman Fitch's um, agreement, I would like to be added as a co-sponsor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yes, Madam Chair. Any further discussion? I do uh, sit on the uh, Gateway uh, Council of Governments, and that has been a point of contention for, it was brought up at the last meeting, and that has uh, has brought a lot of uh, concern out about this loop trolley. And so um, I'm glad to have this resolution to go and say that as far as the council in St. Louis County is concerned, we are not in favor of this. So with that, roll call, please. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number nine, there are seven ayes. Motion carries, resolution number nine is adopted. Madam Chair, prior to reading resolution number 10 this evening, I just wanna note uh, for the public and for all of the members here that there was a separate resolution distributed with this this afternoon, and that was intended as an attachment. So that's resolution number 6655. Um, and again, that is alluded to in section two of resolution 10. So that was distributed as an attachment to this resolution. And with Thank that you. Yes, ma'am. Resolution number 10 introduced by council members Fitch and Days. Please read the resolution. Yes, sir. <clears throat> resolution, whereas the council approved the appointment by the county executive of Mary Zabawa Taylor to the Justice Services Advisory Board, quote, advisory board on June 25th, 2019. And whereas prior to and during her service as a member of the advisory board, Ms. Taylor also served as a volunteer in the criminal justice ministry program at the St. Louis County Justice Center quote, Justice Center. And whereas, <clears throat> as an advisory board member, Ms. Taylor was committed to shining a light on problems at the Justice Center and was the first to call for an independent investigation. And whereas, as an attorney and former director of patient safety at Washington University School of Medicine, Ms. Taylor bought, brought a wealth of relevant experience to her position on the advisory board. And whereas, Ms. Taylor was an outspoken advocate for both employees of the Department of Justice Services and for persons incarcerated in the Justice Center. And whereas Ms. Taylor resigned from her position on the advisory board last week. And whereas Ms. Taylor's departure from the board is a loss for the people of St. Louis County and all those affected by the criminal justice system. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri as follows. Section one, 
The County Council thanks Ms. Taylor for her dedicated service to the people of St. Louis County. Section two, the County Council again calls attention to Council Resolution number 6655, adopted on January 26, 2021, a copy of which is attached to this resolution. Section three, the Administrative Director shall send certified copies of this resolution to Ms. Mary Zabawa Taylor and to the Honorable Sam Page County Executive. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Madam Chair, um, it was a shame to see Ms. Taylor leave the board, um, but she made it pretty clear. She was frustrated by the lack of transparency and communication from the County Executive's Office and County Attorneys. So I hope that her replacement, who we'll hear from soon at the Committee of the Whole, uh, can have the same um, feeling about the people that are being incarcerated there and the employees and advocate for them. So with that, I move for the adoption of resolution number 10. Is there a second? Second. Harder. Discussion. Roll call, please. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Tragus. Aye. <clears throat> Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number 10, there are seven ayes. Motion carries. Resolution number 10 is adopted. Resolution number 11 this evening, introduced by Council Members Days, Dunaway, and Clancy. Kevin, would you read the resolution, please? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> resolution, whereas the St. Louis County Council is taking the extraordinary measure to bring forth serious concerns of mismanagement within the St. Louis County Police Department under the leadership of Chief Mary Barton. And whereas throughout the national police chief, throughout the nation, police chiefs are expected to adhere to and enhance as necessary the policies and protocols in the departments they serve. And whereas from the beginning of her service as chief, Mary Barton has fumbled her way through the position of chief with a blatant disregard for normal behavior in a community that has been torn apart due to racial tension economic inequity and overall mistrust of police officers and a lack of community engagement to build bridges and whereas in june of 2020 chief barton stated the existence of quote systemic racism in the police department is overly broad and probably not accurate end quote and whereas in january 2021 after it was revealed that chief barton's brother-in-law mark peeler used an expletive in a racial slur on an open police dispatcher microphone to describe a predominantly African-American community seeking police service, the chief chose to chastise the director of the diversity unit of the police department for publicly speaking out against the use of racial slurs. And whereas, <clears throat> excuse me, adding to the de declining culture and environment in the police department, St. Louis County employees of color were traumatized and dismayed when Mark Peeler was praised and celebrated for his, ser his years of service in a countywide email and receiving a full pension without corrective action or penalty under the leadership of Chief Barton. And whereas under Chief Barton's leadership, she had the opportunity to employ what this council deems to be a fully qualified human resource director and assistant and instead retain a human resource director without corresponding qualifications or experience that this council finds appropriate for the position and who reportedly serves as a key source of a hostile work environment within the St. Louis County Police Department. And whereas Chief Barton continues to employ an intermittent employee who, it has been argued, was directly responsible for falsified documents that resulted in a 1994 25-year imprisonment of Lamar Johnson, and is currently conducting background investigations of potential police department employees, including minority police recruits. And whereas under Chief Barton's leadership, there is an absence of communication database system to track correspondence to residents and the evidence notification process. And whereas Chief Barton has been slow to update the operational procedures of evidence, including the retention and disposal of evidence. And whereas in March 2021, after public outcry and anguish among St. Louis County residents, and 10 months after her, quote, systemic racism, end quote, statement quoted above, Chief Barton admitted that racism does exist, 
quote, in that people suffer trauma as a direct result of experiencing, end quote, racism. And whereas, <clears throat> as one of the current members of the Board of Managers of the County and Municipal Police Academy, CMPA, Chief Barton has the distinguished opportunity to create policies that proactively address behaviors that hinder the progress and success of potential minority recruits. And whereas this county council believes the practice of institutional racism and discrimination includes retaliatory behavior. And whereas Chief Barton's practice of transferring St. Louis County officers to different divisions within the department has caught the attention of the public and thus leads the public and this council to question whether Chief Barton has the skill set to move forward on unbiased program with, excuse me, within the St. Louis County Police Department that is supportive to the health, treatment, and success of all African American police officers. And whereas this moment in history demands a transformational leader capable of earning the trust of the community she serves, and Chief Barton has yet to demonstrate the bandwidth to do so. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. Section one, the County Council expresses its lack of confidence in Chief Mary Barton, finding it is a necessary public exercise to communicate its opinion that Chief Barton is incapable of guiding the St. Louis County Police Department in the right direction. And therefore, the faith and trust bestowed onto her is fractured and unrecoverable. Section two, the County Council strongly recommends the Board of Police Commissioners hold Chief Barton accountable for the policies, procedures, and practices that have crippled the department. Section three, the administrative director shall send certified copies of this resolution to Chief Barton, the Board of Police Commissioners, and the Honorable Sam Page, County Executive. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, with that, I move the adoption of resolution number 11. Is there a second? Second, sent away. Discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, Councilwoman Clancy. Yes. Um, I wish we were not in the position to be so compelled as to move this resolution tonight. This is not where I wanted to be tonight, um, but I wanna be clear. Even though I support this resolution, the problems did not begin with Chief Barton and they don't end with Chief Barton. Um, we need a transformational leader to meet this moment who sees the opportunities for change in our community and we need a culture within the police department that will support a transformational leader so that they can be successful. And that is on all of us. That is on the chief. That is on everyone throughout the department's ranks. That is on the county executive. That is on the county council. And that is on the police commission. So I want to be careful that this is not just about one person. This is about a system that needs change. Any further discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Trekkers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> well, I certainly appreciate many of the points that were raised in the resolution or that are raised in the resolution. Um, I cannot support the resolution because I believe this council is beginning to weaponize this process and target individuals on a personal ad hominem basis. basis. And many statements in this resolution amount to nothing more than an ad, ad hominem attack on the chief. I certainly have my issues with Chief Barton. That's no secret. But I do not believe this is the proper way to go about it. I do agree with Councilwoman Clancy that Chief Barton inherited problems that have been existent in the, in the department for decades. So it's you cannot place all this on her. But my biggest problem is the weaponization of this process. And for that reason, Madam Chair, I cannot support the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Webb. Yes, Madam Chair. And it's quite a bit to take in. And, and I listen to my other colleagues and I respect their inputs. And I stand in agreement with a lot of the a lot of what they've shared. But we have to have accountability. And yes, this does not all lay at the fight feet of Chief Barton. We always say the buck stop with the head, right? And so if no one else is going to provide accountability, then we must let our leaders know that we are serious about accountability and change. And so you all have to bear with me because I want to share this because I'm learning and 
just excuse me. Just a few days ago, within the span of 28 hours, there were 12 shootings in this region. There was an actual shooting of a customer at a Popeye's. There has been a triple homicide on Long Ridge Trail, and we all remember Miss Rosie's story. Armed carjackings at convenience stores from Parker in 367. Rolling shootouts on 170 and West Florissant, and we all can go on and on. And now in our nation, there's another unarmed black man that has been shot and the nation is on edge. That puts this community even more at edge, on edge. As a council, we should be making sure that the people of St. Louis County are safe and given, and we are giving our police department the necessary tools to be successful Sadly, we have been spending more time talking about mistreatment of minorities, officers. To say that the job of a police officer is stressful and difficult and their relationship in the black community is strained is such an understatement. With all of that, now place them in a police department that is filled with turmoil, submerged in lawsuits with, from within its own department, dissension in leadership, a lack of cup confidence from both organizations that represent the majority of the police department and that they have leadership that refuses to back their words with meaningful action. How are we members of this community to believe that protecting and serve is their top priority? It's too many distractions and chaos. It's an unhealthy work environment. Less than one month ago, and I want us all to hear this, I held a Justice, Health, and Welfare Committee where very, this very topic was brought forth, which was from the Tenero Report. At the table, all the stakeholders' leadership was there. The County Police Department Chief, the Deputy Chief, the Human Resource Director, the Fraternal Order of Police, Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel Troy Doyle, and Officer Shanette Hall, as the leader representation of the Ethical Society of Police. I was perfectly clear that we was there to work on solutions and not point blame, that we wanted to enact and see oversight to help ensure those recommendations from the Tenero Report was put into place to make St. Louis a better policing community in a place where our police can be proud to work and serve in. Our goal was only to address the racial inequalities, to remove the racial discrimination, and to stump out all forms of retaliation and rid our police department of ugly stains that killed the hope to better serve our community. We all acknowledged the problems. Everybody at that table acknowledged the problems and agreed that they were there and that we needed to address them. In fact, I sent out a list of questions specifically about racial issues, recruiting, and retaliation, I received perfect word responses. But the recent actions of the police department's leadership are in total conflict. And that is why the police and staff have a lack of trust and confidence in the leadership and reasons many believe that the current St. Louis Police Department leadership cannot bring about the transformational change that is needed. We've heard about the example from the dispatcher using the flammatory racial slur. Now we have another situation with an officer who's gone above and beyond to help change the image of the police department in serving as a recruiter. And the only justification of the moves was to say that we're going in a different direction. What other direction are we trying to go into when we're saying we're trying to address racial equality, recruit more minorities, and then we make a decision to remove a person that's doing that job, exceptionally from what I've heard, because I've talked to current police officers, I've talked to former uh, leadership in the, in the county police department from all aspects and diversity that support this officer. I commend Officer Hall for her work of diversity in the department and her pa passion and her tenacity and strength to speak up when it's not in good favor. But to tell the truth 
and be transparent. That's what we all say we want. After millions of dollars of lawsuits, unprecedented decision and unfold in the department and are all time low in trust, especially in the minor minority communities, the St. Louis Police Department must maintain the highest level of integrity when handling such issues. We must be transparent. The leadership of the department directly impacts how our communities are served and protected. We're not a small town. We are the largest county in the state of Missouri. And our police department should be exceptional. We should lead the way. The nation should look at us to see how we are transforming and modeling the better way to police and building good relationships in minority com communities. Like my colleague said, I don't place this all at the feet of Chief Barton. I believe she was put in a place of leadership with not the support to be successful. And I put that at the foot of the police, the board of police commissioners and our county executive. I'm often asked, what can I do to help? What do you need, Shalonda? Dr. Page, I need you to use your center of influ influence to help transform and improve the St. Louis County Police Department. I'm being very clear and open with everybody. Status quo is not accepted. We should not allow it. And like any other profession, for my company and any others, when there are problems and they're symptom systematic and they are not being resolved, you have to start with the head. Thank you, Madam Chair. And with those words, I would like to be added to as a co-sponsor of this legislation, this resolution, and I will be supporting it. Any further discussion? Councilman Fitch. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I do appreciate the comments from Councilwoman Webb, and I think a lot of those are, are well taken. But I want to take everybody back just shortly um, to about a year ago when the five members of the Board of Police Commissioners unanimously voted to select Chief Barton as the next police chief for St. Louis County. Shortly thereafter, can you imagine starting your career when you're, you're chosen for such a high level position? And shortly thereafter, one of your bosses, in this case, the county executive says, she wasn't my choice, I wanted someone else. She wasn't my choice, I wanted someone else. That's how you start your new job. So when you talk about how someone has to start their new job and starting at the head of the snake, the head of the snake is the county executive. He's the one that appoints the board of police commissioners and everything starts with him. And when it comes, I agree with Councilman Trachis about weaponizing some of this process. That's absolutely true. I don't have a written speech. I can go through each paragraph in this resolution and tell you how there are so many factual inaccuracies uh, that would expend this, extend this conversation quite long. But what I will tell you is, I've known Chief Barton for, I don't know, 30, 35 years. And what I can tell you about her is she's one of the most ethical people that I know. She only knows right and wrong. And she's trying to do the best that she can do. She applied for a job and she was a select, selected unanimously by a board of police commissioners. Now, she didn't have the opportunity like I did to spend almost nine years in the number two position in the department before I became the chief. She didn't have that opportunity. So there's a, there's a learning curve, an extensive learning curve for any new chief, let alone one that wasn't in the number two position before they went in there. Also, we had the pandemic. We've heard much tonight about the pandemic and how it's changed people's lives. And it's made us do different uh, business differently than we've ever done it before. Chief Barton walked right into the middle of this and had to do this. Uh, one of the things she's not good at, and I will tell you this right up front, she is not good at tooting her own horn at all. She was up in uh, North County putting in ring doorbells last week. How many of you knew that? The only reason I knew it was because I watched the Twitter page of the police department. And they never even mentioned her name. I saw her in the background. That's, she's out there doing those things now that she can. 
I would just ask this council, yes, there are problems in the department and absolutely they've been going on for decades. There's no, no, no doubt about that. Even on my watch, even on my watch. And I will tell you that it's a process that we have to fix. We have to move forward. We have to show our citizens uh, that we're doing the right thing for them. But more importantly, we have to show those men and women that are out there every day doing this job that we support them, that we support them doing this job. And they're more and more that morale is like I've never seen it before. I saw it today in the communication center, even though they're doing a great job every day, the morale is horrible. And it's not just in the county police department. I still do accreditation assessments around the country. This is systemic in law enforcement and in this country. There's no doubt about that. I don't know at this point, it's gonna take a while to work our way out of this, but having a tax uh, on a brand new police chief with a steep learning curve, I don't think that's the way to go. The way to go is to offer uh, constructive criticism instead of attacks. And that's certainly something that I will offer to the chief if she ever, if she asks for it. And I would suggest that all of us do the same. Again, I'll go back to Dr. McCullough's statement earlier, is she was very offended that people that don't know what she does every day want to tell her what she's doing. It's the same way in law enforcement. I was thinking that through her entire statement. How would you like to be a cop in today's world where everybody, a 33-year-old social worker, thinks they know better than you about what your job is? That's not fair. That's not fair to those police officers, those men and women that we ask to jump in front of us if someone's about to hurt us. They are certainly open and deserve some criticism, no doubt about it, but they need to know the community supports them. And by voting no on this resolution tonight, I want to make it very clear that I support the men and women that are out there doing this job every day. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councilman Harder? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I would like to echo some of the thoughts of both Councilman Trachis as well as Councilman Fitch. And I also want to echo some of the comments of, of uh, Councilwoman Webb. Um, this organization, like any other organization, will need uh, some change. And, and that change has to come. And the change will be hard. And the change will be hard to, to do without breaking a few eggs, so to speak. Uh, some people will have to be let go if they can't change. We have to change this organization from what we've heard. Uh, is Mary Barton the person that can do that? I'm not sure. Um, but she was picked by a police board that seemed to have confidence in her at least a year ago. I think our anger or our concern needs to be directed directly at the police board. And that police board by charter is responsible for the upper management and the full police department for that matter and what they do and don't do. And we need to be in communication with that police board now that they have a new member and let them know our dissatisfaction with not just the chief, but in leadership if that's the problem. But we can't pick on the folks on the street. We can't pick on the people that are, as Councilman Fitch says, throwing themselves in front of a bullet for us for $50,000 a year. That can't be the argument here. Whether we like uh, Chief Barton or not, um, that's got to be separate from this whole thing. And, um, and some of the allegations that have been tossed around and, and, and said either written or outside of this conversation, many times are not, uh, not very truthful and can be weaponized at the wrong time. So I think we should give her some grace, but at the same time, we need to be uh, uh, making sure all the leadership of the full police department is doing what they're supposed to do. And if not, they need to be replaced. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Thank you Madam, all very much. I'm sorry. Madam Chair, I just want, I feel like I definitely want to make a clarification. So it's not a personal 
I know your work is passionate when you do your job and people come to you and they say it's not personal, it's your job. But like you spoke highly of her, Councilman Fitch and Harder, I have met Chief Barton. We've had conversations. Uh, I was the councilwoman. She came to meet at Council Point when they was putting out the ring doorbells and she joined me to disseminate those ring doorbells. Appreciate that. My concern is, yes, we want to extend grace and yes, there are learning curves, but can we afford as St. Louis County? Can our residents afford that learning curve? I wish that those who selected Chief Barton, those who advocated for her, would have put, a, put in place an incubation and support system around her to help her be successful from her de, from recommendations for the, 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 the HR director and all other, the, all other leaderships. But that wasn't done. And that, I believe, left her out there fending alone. But you have a situation now that the two main organizations within the police department cannot focus and do their job and trust the mission and execute based on the leadership. And I know I talk to leaders that says policing is like a, a semi-military operation with the command structure and decision. No commander is allowed to lead their shoulders, soldiers out there fending for themselves. I feel like that's what we're doing to our police department. As we compact more and more responsibility on them, not just to be a police officer, but a social worker and, and to reach out and find solutions and outreach to the community with leaving them without any strength in their leadership to fall back on. I'm sorry that it's Chief Barton that's standing here alone because those who were surrounding her in the beginning aren't surrounding her now. But we cannot sacrifice our communities to save face. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for your comments. And I do appreciate that. And I want you to understand that, yes, all of this rests in the hands of the police commissioners. And if the we and if you will recall, I earlier sent a letter to the board of police commissioners asking them to do their job. If you cannot do your job and make sure that that the chief is uh, uh, has the equipment, has what she needs to do her job, then you need to move on. And only one. We had one left. I'm not sure if that letter was why he left, but we did have one to move on. And so I do appreciate the sentiments of all of you here. But as, as uh, Harry, Truman, Harry Truman said, the buck stops here and it's at the head. And if we have a head, we have to make sure that that head has what the head needs in order to be successful. That's not happening at this particular point. And this is a wake up call to the commissioners. Get it done. With that, I renew yeah, my sure. motion and ask for the roll call. Council Member Fitch. No. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Tragus. No. Council Member Harder. No. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number 11, there are four ayes and three noes. Very well. Motion carries. Resolution number 11 is adopted. Madam Chair. Councilman Fitch. Thanks, ma'am. I didn't get a chance to get in before you started the vote. Uh, I wondered if, if we could ask the county executive to weigh in on how he feels about this situation and, and what he plans to do about this resolution being passed tonight. County executive, you want to weigh in on that? Uh, thank you, Councilman. The uh, police commission um, directs uh, the police chief and I will let them receive this resolution and respond appropriately. 
you all get a chance to meet my latest nomination to the police commission and uh, participate in the conversation. Councilman Fitch? It's kind of what I expected. I was looking for him to say he either supported Chief Barton in the work that she's doing or he felt <laughs> like there needed to be some change and I didn't hear that. Any further discussion? Thank you. Moving on, Kevin. I think we're on resolution number 12. Yes, ma'am. Resolution number 12 introduced by Council Member Clancy. Please read the resolution. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> resolution, whereas St. Louis County is a, di is a diverse and inclusive community with a history of opposing discrimination, including discrimination based on gender identity and sexual orientation. And whereas prejudice, intolerance, bigotry, and discrimination not only threaten the rights of St. Louis County residents, but also menace the very foundation of a free democratic society. And whereas hate violence disproportionately impacts the transgender community, particularly women, youth, and persons of color, as was shown last week with the tra tragic shooting death of Dominique Lucius, a 26-year-old black transgender woman in Springfield, Missouri. And whereas, according to the 2015 United States Transgender Survey, and the year prior to completing the survey, nearly half of the respondents were verbally harassed and 9% were physically attacked because of being transgender. And whereas, St. Louis County law prohibits hate crimes, including crimes motivated by animosity towards an individual's gender identity. And whereas, the County Council believes people have the right to be treated according to their gender identity, to be called by the name and pronouns that match their gender identity, and to not be bullied, harassed, or attacked because they are transgender or gender nonconforming. And whereas the council further believes people have the right to use restrooms and locker rooms that match their gender identity, and that transgender youth have the right to, to the same opportunities to learn and participate in school life, including sports and other extracurricular activities as anyone else. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows, section one, the County Council stands in solidarity with transgender residents, their families, and organizations working toward equality and condemns hate, bigotry, and discrimination in all its forms. <clears throat> the Council supports efforts to continue promoting issues critical to the safety and vitality of the transgender community and supports efforts to ensure county and state laws, policies, and services are inclusive of our transgender community, staff, and residents. Section two, the County Council stands in solidarity with the following organizations working to combat hate, bigotry, and discrimination against LGBTQ plus people, including PROMO, the ACLU of Missouri, Greater STL Incorporated, Gateway Business Guild, Victory Fund Missouri, Out and Equal Workplace Advocates, St. Louis, NARAL, Planned Parenthood, the St. Louis Association of Realtors, and the Missouri AARP. Section three, the administrative director shall send certified copies of this resolution to the organizations listed in section two. Council Bob Clancy? Yes, I move for the adoption of resolution number one. Is there a second? Second, done away. Or 12, I'm sorry, resolution 12. Oh, okay. Discussion, um, discussion Councilman Trakis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it's no secret where I stand on this issue. I've written about it. Um, this resolution, together with other initiatives on this agenda, um, present a coordinated effort and agenda that presents a real and present threat to aspects of the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which I will speak to momentarily in unfinished business. But I want the public to become aware of this issue um, because it's not as simple as placed in this resolution. There are ample protections currently in county law as well as state and federal law um, regarding the uh, discrimination mentioned in this resolution. But I will speak more uh, in depth in a moment, Madam Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. I will be opposing this resolution. Any further discussion? Any Madam further Chair. discussion? Councilman Fitch. Thank you. I agree with Councilman Trakis, uh, but I do have a question for Councilwoman Clancy, the sponsor. In Section 2, uh, the County Council stands in solidarity with the following organizations. Uh, I know all the acronyms of except for N-A-R-A-L. What is that one? 
Um, NARAL is a, an organization. It actually doesn't stand for anything more. They are anything anymore. They used to have an acronym and now they are NARAL Pro-Choice Missouri. Um, they do similar work as Planned Parenthood. So is it a abortion provider? Is that what this is? What NARAL is? Yes. Oh, no, I'm asking no, you. I don't they do know. Not, no, they do not provide abortions. They advocate for reproductive justice and freedom. Okay. So they advocate for the right to an abortion, correct? Councilman that is Trichter, correct. One second. Thank you, Councilman, Councilman Trichter. Trichter. You have the floor. Gonna, thank you. I was going to ask that question. So they do. Um, you heard Councilman Trakis' uh, response. That's true. Councilman? Yes, and they the more so though they they advocate for the the respect and dignity of all residents of the state of Missouri um, in healthcare and in many other areas as well, which is what brings them um, into connection with this issue. Okay, thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Councilman Fitch, you done? Councilman Trakis, nothing further, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, Councilman Harder. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, if, if this resolution would have stopped at about paragraph four, uh, I would be in support of this. I've always said I'm against any kind of discrimination. But when you start bringing in uh, different bathrooms, you start uh, aligning with uh, abortion providers and others, uh, you're not winning my vote, unfortunately. And um, I, I've always been against discrimination of any form. But when you start building a case for these other things and trying to align this vote as either you're against it or for it, uh, I'm going to have to be against it because this is not, uh, this is not what I, I signed up for and, and for what this, how I express myself um, uh, better, but uh, this is not a, a, uh, a situation that should be yes or no when you put all these things in here. I think you could have streamed the line this and got your same point across without bringing in these other groups and other issues. So I will be uh, opposing this. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Councilwoman Clancy. I felt it was important to bring this resolution forward because our trans neighbors here in St. Louis County and across the state and across the country are under attack right now. My only agenda is to ensure that every citizen of St. Louis County and beyond is treated with respect and dignity. We all deserve that. 33 states have introduced anti-trans laws this year, including here in the state of Missouri. Um, and we owe it to our transgender neighbors, community members, and constituents to make our commitment to their safety and inclusion clear. Um, Promo said it best, transphobia, biphobia, and homophobia sit at the intersection of racism and misogyny and foster violence. If we are not working to end the societal violence um, that ended the lives of folks like Dominique and so many others, we are part of the problem. So it was important for me to bring this about um, on behalf of the trans community and the LGBTQ plus community this evening. Thank you. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Council Member Fitch. No. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakis? No. Council Member Harder? No. Council Member Days? Aye. Council Member Webb? Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number 12, there are four ayes and three noes. Resolution number. 12, 12 is adopted. Yes, Apologies, Madam Chair. Here we go. Okay, our final resolution this evening, resolution number 13, introduced by Council Member Webb. Council Member Webb? Would, would, Kevin, would you please read the resolution? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> resolution, whereas Ella M. Scales was born on December 23rd, 1946 to Charles and Myrtle Benson in St. Louis, Missouri, and whereas Ella was the youngest of five children, 
And whereas Ella was known for her heart of gold and thrived when giving to others. And whereas Ella was a trusted confidant and counselor to many. And whereas Ella was the owner of Ella's Lounge and Restaurant for many years and was later employed by Elaine Stevens Beauty College, where she enjoyed working in the dispensary and interacting with students. And whereas Ella taught Sunday school in her early years and was especially proud to have two of her daughters, Nona and Gwen, serve as ordained ministers. And whereas Ella was a loving and cherished mother, grandmother, great grandmother, aunt, godmother, and friend to many. And whereas it is appropriate for the county council and all St. Louis Countyans to pause and recognize a life well lived that has positively impacted so many in her community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. The County Council offers its deepest condolences to the family and friends of Miss Ella Scales. Section 2, the Administrative Director shall send a certified copy of this resolution to Miss Scales family as a permanent token of the Council's sincere condolences and recognition of a life well lived. Thank you, Kevin. Madam Chair, I move for the adoption of this resolution. Is there a second? Second, so. Clancy. Discussion. Roll call, please. <laughs> Excuse me. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Webb. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number 13, there are seven ayes. Resolution number 17 is adopted. Moving on to unfinished business. Item number one. Please hold on the order of business and that will be the order. Item number two. Uh, please hold on the order of business. Same motion to number three and that will be the order. Item number four. Hold on the order of business and that will be the order. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Councilman Trakis. Thank you. I note that item four is uh, pertaining to executive order number 18. And I'm just wondering if Mr. Fitch has um, anything he wants to do at this point or not. I, I don't, you know, whatever. But, I just want to. I believe this wanna... was the. I th this was uh, what he had asked the county executive yes. to hang on for, Councilman Fitch. Thank you. Are you ready to go to number four? Well, it, I have held it on the order of business, but we can rescind that if you want. Or we can continue to do that. But if you have a question regarding that, yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, okay. a few. So we received the executive order from the county executive, who said he's going to declare all of the public restrooms in St. Louis County uh, outside, I'm sorry, outside of the public area um, as uh, gender neutral. So my question for last week when the county executive wasn't here is, I don't understand what you mean by a single stall restroom. Can you explain what your executive order declares? Single stall, um restroom I would take it at base face value it's a restroom with one stall so in county government uh, I think I saw a press release from your office it said there's about 300 of those so there's 300 of those where it's a a single whether a toilet let's say that and maybe a sink uh, those for the most part are already gender neutral uh, because anybody can use them um, so I'm, I'm trying to understand what your executive order actually changes or does. The executive order changes the signs on single stall restrooms to just say restroom instead of indicating a gender. Does it require that the restrooms that you've now designated as gender neutral have locks on all of them? 
if you are aware of a wet restroom in county government that doesn't have a lock, please let us know. But all the restrooms in county governments, uh, government, according to our Department of Public Works, have locks on them. That was just a simple question. It wasn't adversarial. I'm just asking the question. Uh, we did very have interesting a, question. We, we did have a caller last week who said um, that she uses the county restrooms in a park and there's no door at all on those. Uh, so this would not apply to those. Is that correct? I'm not aware of restrooms in county parks that don't have doors, but we can certainly investigate. Perhaps those are the old style outhouses. I am not sure. But if you can provide more information, we can certainly have someone in parks investigate the restrooms in the county parks that may not have doors. And I don't know, uh, I think she was from Afton, if I remember correctly. So it was one of the parks, I would guess, in that area. So mm -hmm. those are all of the questions I had, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Harder. Uh, just a point of clarification uh, also to the county executive with this executive order. Does uh, these single stall restrooms, from one I've seen in county government, tend to be in secure areas, such as the two that we have off of the library hallway. If someone enters one of our buildings and requests to use one of those, is there some uh, accommodation going to be made to bring that person back into these secure areas, whether it's in your office or our office or any other office to use those bathrooms and what will be the procedure for that, either by building security or from uh, anyone that's entering our county buildings? I, I, I'm not sure how to answer your question, Councilman. I have an executive order that addresses signs on single stall bathrooms to make them gender neutral. It doesn't address uh, the other things that you're talking about as far as security and secure restrooms. So if someone enters at the street level of our building and wants to use one of those restrooms, how will they go about doing that? Someone will use the restroom. How would they know where it is or how, who will take them there to use that restroom? If someone wants to use a restroom in county government, then they will use the restroom. My executive order changes the signs on single stall restrooms to simply say restroom and not indicate a gender. It still doesn't answer the question. If someone walks in and if you're saying we should be hospitable to people to use these restrooms, we have to then take them to where these restrooms are so that they can use them. How is that done either through security or through receptionists or other county employees? How will that be done going forward? My executive order changes the sign on single stall restrooms to simply say restroom. If someone comes into a county building and asks to use the restroom, I'm sure that someone in county government will help them as, as anyone would try to accommodate someone who asks to use the restroom. I, this is a broken record, I guess, but so that person will then be escorted up to the library of our building in our office to use that gender neutral restroom or will they be escorted to the hallway restroom and use that restroom i'll depend they on feel uncomfortable county government employees and visitors to find their way to the restroom without help if they need help I'm sure they'll ask for it and someone will try to offer them some direction. My executive order changes the signs on single stall restrooms to simply say restroom and not say uh, a specific gender. So there was no thought into how we would accommodate
people, even though you change the signs, which is a good good political <laughs> thing, but how do you actually put it into practice for those people to know where to go so they can feel most comfortable using those gender neutral bathrooms if you don't ever take anybody there? It's kind of well, a empty perhaps, promise. Perhaps, Councilman, you can suggest a process or procedure to address your concerns, or you can follow up with your questions in writing, and we'll try and find a more specific plan for someone who has concerns about access to the restroom, a county employee or a visitor to our county. But my executive order changed the signs on single stall restrooms to simply say restroom and not indicate a gender. Uh, Councilman Trakis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't have a question, more of a statement, but I appreciate the chair's indulgence. Um, this is an important issue for me. Um, the county executive's April 2nd, 2021 Executive Order 18 cannot be considered or viewed in isolation. It must be scrutinized in concert with other measures, not the least of which is resolution number 12 tonight, as well as sub bill number one for bill number 77 and bill number 88. I wrote the county executive about this issue on February 22nd, 2021. My letter was sent in response and rebuttal to Councilwoman Clancy's February 19th, 2021 letter requesting that Dr. Page, quote, use his position and power as county executive to swiftly execute the necessary executive action to guarantee that all single stall restrooms in county government buildings are designated as gender neutral, close quote. My letter was intended to counsel Dr. Page that proceeding along those lines um, does not likely represent the position of the majority of St. Louis County residents. Nonetheless, the county executive chose to proceed down that path. On its face, Executive Order 18 seems reasonable, indeed even fair. Certainly there is nothing wrong with having single stall restrooms re-signed as restrooms. That is not the concern here. The concern in question is and must be, what do executive order 18, resolution number 12 tonight, sub bill one for bill number 77 and bill number 88 portend? The answer to that question is critical given Councilwoman Clancy's promise that quote, there is more yet to come, close quote. Let's be clear, there is little doubt that the Executive Order 18, Sub Bill 1 for Bill Number 77, Bill Number 88, and Resolution Number 12 tonight represent the tip of a spear of what amounts to a St. Louis County version of the Equality Act currently being considered in the U.S. Senate. So, what do these measures portend or bring to us? Um, as I've said, these measures and whatever is yet to come represent um, the beginnings of the imposition of a version of the Equality Act. They are, in fact, the tip of a spear of a political agenda, as I have said, that is intended to erode, compromise, and ultimately nullify the protections and liberty afforded to all citizens by the Free Exercise Clause of the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Once adopted, it will be, be lawful, and by that I mean sub bill one for bill 77, bill number 88, and whatever else is yet to come. Once those measures are adopted, it would be unlawful for an imam, a rabbi, a priest, or a pastor following the tenets of faith to refuse to marry a gay couple. It would be illegal for a physician who for reasons of her faith refuses to perform an abortion she will be subject to civil suit and criminal pen penalty. To be clear, my objection to these measures is not about preventing anyone from making a lifestyle choice. This is about protecting the free exercise of religious beliefs and the values inherent in those beliefs. This is about protecting the rights and liberties of those who espouse and live by traditional values to, con to continue to do so without inhibition, intimidation, or restriction. It is imperative that the citizens of St. Louis County understand and perceive the very real and present threat 
Executive Order 18, Sub Bill 1 for Bill Number 77, Bill Number 88, and tonight's Resolution Number 12, um, and promised measures yet to come posed to religious freedom and traditional family values. Indeed, the order issued Friday by the United States Supreme Court in Tandon versus Newsom clearly recognizes the importance of protecting religious liberty from the militant secular values that dominate American public life today. As elected officials, we have a sworn duty to protect and defend the Constitution, the laws of Missouri and St. Louis County, and the American people. Passive resistance and acquiescence is no longer an option for me, nor should it be for any of you. As these measures come to our consideration for a vote, I would hope that you would keep these tenants in mind before you willingly and, and blithely um, choose to support them. Thank you, Madam Chair, for your patience. That's Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Because I have uh, 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 ordered that that be held on the agenda, held on the order of business. Any further discussion? Moving on to new business. We have no new business this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, thank you. This has been a rather lengthy meeting. I do appreciate y'all's patience, uh, but I want to make sure that you have your uh, your calendars and be flexible. And while we're trying to, to trying to get seven people together, now I am and have have tried to um, get the majority of people together. I don't like to just operate with four people, and I would like to have as many of the seven as we can possibly get. So when the office calls, or my office, or uh, Councilman Hardis' office calls, please, please try to make your uh, schedules flexible. We have a, a tremendous agenda ahead of us, and we need to move forward with a lot of these things. So I do appreciate that. Anything further to come before the uh, council at this time? Councilman Harder. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was just brought to the attention, uh, the Post-Dispatch uh, about 34 minutes ago, Jacob Barker wrote an article about Northwest Plaza and the settlement that was reached by the county and the Glarner development people. We got a memo on this uh, last week saying that there had been a gag order, that we couldn't talk about this, we, we couldn't talk about the settlement, um, that uh, everything had to be referred to the, um, the legal department and to Ms. Orwick. And now everything uh, brought about in the settlement is right here in the article. And on dollars, people, uh, times, the whole thing. Um, so do we have a mole in our organization that leaked all this or was this purposely leaked? for some political reason. And when Mr. Trachis and us worked so hard on this project and we asked for the whole or committee the whole to talk about this settlement and then we find out about it in the post-dispatch without even a, an acknowledgement of the work that was done to put this, uh, this uh, whole shenanigans to bed. It's just disconcerting and um, I'm really upset about it and it it, uh, it makes me pause in understanding the people we have working for us in our legal department. That's my comment. Thank you. Uh, Beth Orwick called me and wanted a committee of the whole to discuss this. Uh, in that uh, communication, she did indicate that it was uh, not to be discussed outside of what we did at the Committee of the Whole. We have been trying to put that Committee of the Whole together. We could not get a quorum to do that. I'm not sure whether a post-dispatch got their information, but that was my next, I, I, I believe you, I'm not saying that it's not true, uh, but but I, I wanted you to know that that, was, that is one of the committees that we were trying to get together. Uh, and so I can't speak to where that came from. I don't know if Ms. Oric wants to weigh in on that or not. Uh, Councilman Days, I did um, request a committee of the whole uh, because of the uh, settlement agreement that we have with um, the, uh, uh, that that I wrote you about. It would be improper for me to discuss that in, as it is legal business outside of a committee of the whole, and I requested that closed session. That is why uh, I told the council about that. Um, I will say that settlement agreements are open for uh, 
pursuant to the Sunshine Law. So if there is a Sunshine request, we under the law have to give um, a copy of that. So there was a Sunshine request for a copy of the agreement. Um, and so I have to do that. But no other comment came from my office other than the one that was agreed to that was discussed um, in that communication to you. I still would like to have a committee of the whole to talk with the council about this and to give you the information that you need to understand the agreement. Well, clearly, and, and we are still planning to do that. However, uh, with the absence of uh, no information about Councilman Harder or Councilman Trakis's uh, efforts in trying to get that thing settled, I think that is uh, that's very disconcerting at this particular point. We will continue again. I need I need to make sure that we got at least four people here uh, so that we can have the committee of the whole. Uh, Councilman Trakis, I think I saw your hand. Oh, no, Madam Chair, the, the, the county councilor touched on what I thought was likely to have happened was that they sunshined it. That's it was just going to be an opinion of mine. Okay, and we are still planning, uh, Beth, I am still planning to have the Committee of the Whole as soon as I can get a quorum. I would have Councilman, Councilman Harder. So I guess the next procedure, when we get these type of letters, that we're not, if we're not going to be informed of this, then our assistants need to uh, ask for a sunshine request from the government to tell us what's going on in the government? Is that the new procedure? Or do we wait until somebody at least schedules a hearing before they go to the media about uh, about something internal like this? It's just ridiculous. Councilwoman, I, I'm sorry, Beth, you wanted to respond? Councilwoman Days, I will only say that I did send that communication to the council because I did want to tell you what was going on and, and the way that I can do that and talk to you at, together is in a committee of the whole in a closed session. And that is why I sent that communication to you. And that is my intent is to, to discuss that with you as you were requested. Councilwoman Clancy. Yes, are we not having a committee of the whole at 3 p.m. tomorrow? We were surveyed about that time, I believe. And it, that's not- Well, we might have been- we might have been surveyed, but I, I don't know if, if we were able to get a quorum with that. So okay. I don't not know able to get it right. So what we're doing okay. is asking if these particular times are available and having uh, significant challenges in getting a quorum. Uh, and and I, I'm, I, I'm going to suggest some other things, but we'll get to that later. Councilman Fish, I think I saw your hand. Thank you. Uh, so Ms. Orwick, if you were sunshine for this information, well, you were, or else it wouldn't have gotten out. Um, why wouldn't you let us know that you were sunshine so you could tell us, hey, listen, just so you know, the media has asked for this information and we've released it to them. So we could know before, like Councilman Harder just found out from probably a constituent that it was posted online. Uh, why would you not let us know that? I would prefer to talk to you about this case and this settlement in a closed session of the committee of the whole. That is why I requested and told the council I would like to do that. I had a communication with Councilwoman Days about setting up that committee of the whole. That is what I can say in this public forum. But a sunshine request would have come to your office to approve. Is that right for a settlement like this? I would prefer to discuss this in the committee of the whole. I can explain everything that I need to explain to you. And I don't think it's proper to discuss legal things in a public forum. I don't know if there's anything left to discuss in the committee of the whole, though, if it's all in the in the paper already. I haven't seen what's in the post dispatch. I would like to have the dialogue with the council. If that if the council does not like does not want to have that dialogue, then that's the council's problem. I think we need to do that at least to clear the air. Councilman Fitch. I do, too. Okay. Um, any 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 further discussion? Any more announcements? Tax assessments? Anybody? All right. Uh, please make sure that you keep your calendars. I cannot ask you uh, enough to please keep your calendars flexible so we can get these meetings scheduled. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any other? I'm sorry, Councilman. No, just thank you. Thank okay. you. So um, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. We don't have any no's on that one. Thank you. Right. Take care. Good night. Have a good evening. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.